Welcome back to another mukbang, you guys. Today is a lazy mukbang because I, well, I kind of wanted to cook for you guys, but I got home from the gym. I like went to cleaning my house almost immediately because I have all this energy. I kind of like to use it up. So I always clean up the house after working out and, you know, I have these crazy ideas of what I should be cooking um, and what I should be filming. But sometimes I end up getting lazy, like today. And this actually sounded so good. And I've been craving Panda Express for so, so, so long. So I've been eating this. And honestly, I've been eating this too. This is some cheap wine I got somewhere at some supermarket. So you're just gonna drink this with me. It's so cheap that you could see right through. You could see right through the glass almost. There, I mean, there are some wines that you could actually see through, but not through cabs. Cabs are usually very thick. I call them like blood. I think cabs look like blood to me if they're really thick, um, if they're like the high end kinds, you know? But anyway, I got some delicious food today. I got two plates. I might not finish them, but I will try. But on top of that, I also got these cream cheese, cream cheese ragoons, I believe they're called. I got that as well. So I got some sauce for that. And you know me, stealing all the chili sauce. I love this chili sauce. I don't know if I've told you before, but it's very different from sriracha. I don't think it's supposed to be sriracha, but I actually like this chili sauce a lot. So I kind of like to put it all over the entrees. Yeah. I'm not gonna put too much even though I want to, just because I don't want you guys to think I'm screwing, screwing up with the food. Not everyone likes spicy. Mm. Mm. Sorry, I dug right in. Hmm. Hmm. This is hitting the spot. Mmm. I love this food so much. In my first Panzer video, I regret not ta not eating as much because I was so concerned about, you know, talking. Mm. This is the new the new flavor. It's like five flavored shrimp. <clears throat> Five flavored. I, 
I think I know what they're trying to go for because with Asian cooking, there's this spice that we use. It's like a five flavored seasoning. I think some of you guys would know that. Um, maybe that's what they're trying to do, but I don't think it tastes like that. So aside from that comparison, does it taste good? It's basic. I was actually trying to decide between this or the honey walnut shrimp. I regret not getting the honey walnut shrimp. That's actually what I really wanted. But I wanted to try it. I just can't. I can't eat rice with chopsticks. Some cheap wine. And when I'm talking cheap, it's like $4 cheap. But honestly, I feel like I don't need fancy wines all the time. And plus, I don't even know what fancy wine is. Sometimes I, I act like I know what, you know, what great wines are, what a quality wine is. I don't know, this to me tastes fine. It's not wonderful and it's not terrible. It does the job, I think that's all that matters. And by the second glass, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even care. Mm. This is all some good stuff. Ah. I'm gonna try this cream cheese ragoon here. It's my mess. Mmm. Mmm. Honestly, Panda, you have not been failing at all. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Seriously, get yourself some panna and wine. That's all you need right now. And drink your wine like it's water. Let's finish it up a little bit. That one's done. Mmm. I always forget that I can't pick up rice with chopsticks. My God. Mm. I love veggies. Mm. 
I know, someone's gonna go, why don't you put it closer to you? Dude, you can't see the food if I put this closer to me. Mukbang problems, come on now. It's fine. It's fine if I drop a little bit, not a big deal. Such a happy place. I mean, this is not authentic Chinese food. Honestly, and I never said that I wanted it to be authentic. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I love eating foods that might not be either authentic or might be of high quality. I know that sounds crazy, but I really do like bad food sometimes. And when I say bad food, it's not necessarily foods that are high in calories or everything fried, you know, and full of fat. It's not that, I'm talking about taste-wise. Sometimes I really love eating frozen fried chicken, you know, or TV dinners. I don't know what it is, and perhaps it's my way of experiencing nostalgia, but I love eating bad food. It's kind of like how we eat ramen, you know? Mm. to basically sum it up, I love highly processed foods. I love the way they taste. And sometimes I prefer it. Sometimes I'll have, I'll go out for a nice dinner. You know, like those expensive dinners. And those restaurants serve you like what looks like a three ounce piece of fish or steak, very small, very small, and a few few pieces of like asparagus or something, some special hipster vegetable. And that's about it. And you're left wondering, is there complimentary bread somewhere? Like you're always looking for that free shit because you're trying to get full. And who wants to order another, you know, another meal when that meal alone was like close to $30. But like my point is, is that even if I did enjoy what I ate, that delicious steak, sometimes I just, on my way home, I'll stop by McDonald's and I'll get my McDonald's. It could be an addiction. There is something in highly processed foods that gets us to come back and we keep coming back. Hello, have you not heard of Hot Cheetos? Those are evil. Hmm. Wouldn't that be so scary if I finished this whole thing? It's really good. Like, everything's made fresh. 
That's real good. That's your glass of wine there. Don't forget to drink it. And if I happen to finish this early or soon, I'm going to be drinking that one. I'm already eyeing it. I mean, if I had to stop eating meat, I think I could. That's how much I love veggies. So if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you wouldn't have known that I was in San Diego for a bachelorette party this past weekend. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. I wanna let you know too that I actually deleted my Snapchat or deactivated the account. I really, I tried. I just do not like Snapchat at all. I don't think it's easy to use. It's not user friendly, pretty much. Not to me at least, not to this old fool. I don't really like the format. There's a lot of things I do not like about Snapchat. So, if you are curious to know where I went, all I did was deactivate the account. I probably won't ever use it again. I guess no more dick pics from you guys. No, seriously though, some people were sending me dick pics. That's okay. Whatever you wanna do. Um. What was I saying? Hmm, I did it. A little bit of rice though, but I did it. What was I saying? Hmm. Yeah, so if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I went, went out and celebrated my friend Jennifer, um, her bachelorette party. It was really fun. It was super cool. We went to a country club. I loved it. Who knew that I would love country music at a club? I mean, maybe I was too judgmental about it, but my God, was I having a good time. I loved the music that they were playing. You know, we always talk shit on country music, but give it a chance. You might like it, especially in like a dancing scene, you know, where everyone's line dancing. It was fun. I really liked it. I think we were the only Asians there. <laughs> Who cares? But like these Asians wearing cowboy hats. They liked it though. People loved it.
and I stayed in a place with it was like 10 people including me, myself right so 10 people in this Airbnb there were only like what one two three three rooms the couch and like a pull pull out bed pull out bed it was pretty it was pretty tight and there were only two restrooms and it's funny because I posted this on Instagram I talked about like my problems with using the bathroom or the restroom when you're sharing you know rooms with other people it's just weird because I feel I feel so like poop shy even though I shouldn't be but I I thought so many times about running across the street to Subway and just using their restroom, but whatever. I just, I, you know, I had to go. So I just, why, why is, why does it matter? I don't understand. I don't understand why I care so much. And my biggest fear is when someone's like tugging at the doorknob, you know, twisting the doorknob. And it did happen twice. Nobody said anything, but so funny. Why do I try? Hmm. Mm -mm It was funny because the bride-to-be, even though it was her day, she was just so interested in how my life was going, you know? I find in situations like that, people like to ask each other, so ask each other, so when are you getting hitched? When are you getting hitched? You know, that's if you're in a relationship at the moment. She asked me like, oh, you know, how are you and CJ? Would you ever get married? I mean, I get that question a lot. But I think I've already, have I mentioned this? CJ has asked me to marry him twice, and I've said no twice. Um, I'm not ready. I think he totally understands and he respects that, and I think that's wonderful. I, I, I think he's kind of sad about it still, but he's still with me today, and I think that means a lot. But he knows that it takes a lot for me. I'm kind of a commitment phobe. I'll be totally honest with you. With anything, not just with marriage, with anything. I just cannot commit. I guess I just have a lot of fear, right? I think I need to call my therapist tomorrow and let him know what's going on. But, sorry. Um, but yeah, she asked me and I told her, no, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Um, but then again, but then I had the opportunity to ask her a few questions like, you know, are you guys, yeah, are you guys totally excited? Are you scared? All that good stuff. I guess like maybe 15 minutes later, we started talking about like shared accounts because I, because I did tell her like, oh, the reason why, you know, I told him no twice when he asked me to marry him is because I am scared of commitment. And I specifically said there was a situation that I brought up. It was, um, he wanted to actually do, you know how you guys do a shared account through uh, like a debit card or a savings account, checking savings account and you do a shared account. So we have a shared account now. And he's he wanted us to do that just so that we can share um, finances and all that and we can both view the activity, all that good stuff. So we know exactly what we're spending. And he's really good at monitoring that, I'm not. But yeah, there was a period in my life, the reason why he asked me to do that is because I was struggling. I was struggling so bad, like I, I was bad with money, 
real bad. Like, terrible with money. Before I get into that, I want to finish up the conversation with Jen. So she pretty much told me that her and her fiance, they don't, they share one account, but that account, I guess they put a specific amount of money in that one account and they use that account to pay whatever bills they have, right? But they don't technically have, they still have their own personal accounts. I don't have personal accounts. He doesn't have his own, pro like we, everything is shared, everything. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I know that all couples are different. Tell me how you do it and if it's worked out for you. But my friend was saying how, she was just saying like, you know, I don't want him to know how much I'm spending on my lunches at work. Or I, don't, I don't want him to know what I'm buying when I'm going out shopping. Like I want to keep that private. And I mean, I, I prefer that, but in my situation, which I will get into, it wasn't going to work that way. Why? Because I wasn't making a lot of money and I was struggling. And before I got in this relationship, I was already struggling financially. It was bad, bad, bad. I might be able to finish this. Let's just say I was the type of person that would open up a credit card, any credit card, Capital One, Bank of America, Chase, what you name it. I probably tried it. Best Buy. Any place that would give me a credit card. I tried to apply. Some of them denied me. Some of them gave, gave me a card or approved me. I just wanted to buy things. And I would open up credit cards to buy them. And I didn't give a shit. This finance drama was up until I was 21, you know, 21, 22 when I met him. But if I had a fucking quarter for every time I overdrafted on my checking account, we'd be hella rich, you and I. I don't know why I always overdrafted. Like I literally would have $12 in my bank account, right? In my checking. And let's say a friend invites me to go to the movies or something. What a movie back then was what, about $7. I thought, cool, that's, I have a little bit more than that. I should be fine, you know? So I would go to the movies with quite literally only $12 and something cents in my checking and I, and I knew that that's all I had. And I wasn't gonna get paid until maybe three days later, um, the Friday. So I just went anyway because I was young and I wanted just to go out and do whatever. So I would pay for the ticket. It should, you know, it would be fine. And then my friend would want to go to the, um, to what that food stand or whatever um he would want to get popcorn and you know it's super expensive so i remember wanting to kind of tag along like i wanted to do the same things i wanted to enjoy myself at the movies eating popcorn eating food eating candy whatever it may be um i just wanted to be in at that moment so i was willing to do anything i would uh, i pretty much remember basically trying to find the cheapest thing I could buy just so that I can enjoy the whole experience. You know, I wanted to eat something while I watched the movie. So I think I remembered like buying something and I did not calculate correctly. This is one of those instances. Um, 
So anyway, because you know all that movie theater food, super expensive, right? So I did that and all of a sudden, I didn't know it then, but um, I guess I went over like a dollar or whatever, whatever it was, but I wanted to swipe it anyway. I knew, I knew I went over, but I swiped the card anyway. There was just some weird shit about it, right? And I know you know what I know. Like, I, I know you know that I know that you know what an overdraft is. Um, it's not a good feeling, but sometimes you just do it anyway, even though you know you don't have the funds. You just kind of hope that it goes through. And then maybe when you get home, you'll figure it out. Hopefully, maybe you'll find $40 somewhere that you can deposit in your checking account so that you don't get a fee. That was a vicious cycle that I went through on a weekly basis. I was bad. I was bad. It was terrible. And at this age, I was working, at that age, I was working at Starbucks. It paid me jack shit. I didn't work full time. I was just a kid, a teenager, <clears throat> trying to have fun with my friends with no fucking money. One time, my overdraft fee was pretty high. And I think that time, I had left that overdraft fee in there for a month or something. I, and I was so scared to touch my checking account. And that time, I was paid um, through, like, checks, you know? It wasn't... Um, it wasn't processed electronically, so it didn't go directly in my checking account. But I was so... It was so bad, I didn't want to lose any money that I didn't want to even pay the overdraft fee because that would take money out of, out from my paycheck. It, it was psycho. Like, I, I think I was absolutely psycho with money. I did not understand it almost. It was so stupid. But that's how I thought. I thought, oh my god, if I pay this fee now, I'm down freaking $40 for the week. That was my thought process. And that's why I never even bothered to touch it. And guess what? When you don't pay that overdraft fee, poof, another charge on top of that. And guess how I figured that out? I figured that out by selling some of my personal belongings. I went into my closet It's like a drug addict. I was like a drug addict. I went to my closet and I chose, grabbed a bunch of clothes, whatever I could sell. And I went to Buffalo Exchange. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's kind of like a secondhand store. And I quite literally sold three-fourths of my clothes that I owned because I was trying to freaking pay that off. It was a dark moment in my life. Good God. Throughout all this, I dare... I dared not to ask my parents for money. I just, I was, I don't know. It's just the way I was raised. Like, I just don't want to ask them for money. I don't know what it is. 
and they were right there. They could have helped me. They would have been upset with me, but And that's why I have a shared account. <laughs> but I will admit, I got so much better. I'm freaking 30, I have to get my shit together, of course. I love all the veggies. So please let me know if you've experienced this before. How, are you better or are you still that person that's spending you're just completely out of control? Like the way I was. Sorry, excuse me. And what I want to finish off saying is that, you know, my boyfriend, he's amazing for even taking me on as far as knowing that I have all this debt, but I took care of it on my own. And I'm okay now because of him. Now with marriage, I mean, would you marry someone with a ton of debt? I don't know. Marriage scares me too much to commit to. It is too much to commit to. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm sure there are great things about it, but my gosh, those shitty things that do happen with marriage at this moment outweighs all the good things, all the good things I'm hearing at least. Still so crunchy. Mm. I'm telling you though, don't be afraid to have wine with your panda. It actually tastes pretty good. So just to sum it all up <clears throat> with the bachelorette party and all that stuff, I just want to say thank you to those bride bridesmaids that worked so hard to get that together. What is that? I think I'm good here. So before I leave you, let's open up a fortune. 
Okay, I know some of you might get mad at me, but I do like feeding fortune cookies to my dogs. I don't necessarily like to eat them. I mean, I don't mind them, but my dogs love them more. It says, international travel is in your future. This is true, because I am going to Vietnam this October. Thank you, fortune cookie. I have one more. I want to see what they're saying. Yeah, that was a mess. Say it simply and with passion. Fuck you. Just kidding. I love you. Thanks for hanging out with me again. <sighs> Did I really just eat both plates? I'm insane. I'm probably going to finish from one later. Thanks for hanging out with me again, guys. Sorry I got lazy. <laughs> Dog fur. I'll try not to... I guess overdo it when I know I'm supposed to film a cookbang, but I'll be back. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks again for hanging out with me. Orange Oompa Loompa. Love you. Bye.